Tuesday, January 2, a song for every season. Read Psalm 3, Psalm 33, verses 1 to 3, and Psalm 109, verses 6 to 15. What different facets of human experience do these psalms convey? First of all, Psalm 3, beginning at verse 1. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say to me, There is no help for him in God. Selah. For you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. I cried to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. Selah. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessings are upon your people. Salah. And Psalm 33, beginning at verse 1. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Praise the Lord with the harp. Make melody for him with an instrument of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. And Psalm 109, verses 6 to 15. Set a wicked man over him, and let an accuser stand at his right hand. When he is judged, he will be found guilty, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children continually be vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also from their desolate places. Let the creditor seize all that he has, and let strangers plunder his labour. Let there be none to extend mercy to him, nor let there be any to favour his fatherless children. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let them be continually before the Lord, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. The Psalms make the believing community aware of the full range of human experience, and they demonstrate that believers can worship God in every season in life. In them we see the following. 1. Hymns that magnify God for His majesty and power in creation, His kingly rule, judgment and faithfulness. 2. Thanksgiving psalms that express profound gratitude for God's abundant blessings. 3. Laments that are heartfelt cries to God for deliverance from trouble. 4. Wisdom psalms that provide practical guidelines for righteous living. 5. Royal psalms that point to Christ who is the sovereign king and deliverer of God's people. 6. Historical psalms that recall Israel's past and highlight God's faithfulness and Israel's unfaithfulness to teach the coming generations not to repeat the mistakes of their ancestors, but to trust God and remain faithful to His covenant. The poetry of the Psalms demonstrates distinctive power to capture the attention of readers. Though some of these poetic devices are lost in translation, we can still, in our native language, appreciate many of them. 1. Parallelism involves the combining of symmetrically constructed words, phrases or thoughts. Parallelism helps in understanding the meaning of corresponding parts. For instance, in Psalm 103 verse 1, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. In this parallelism, my soul is all that is within me, namely, one's whole being. 2. Imagery uses figurative language to strongly appeal to readers' physical senses. For instance, God's refuge is depicted as the shadow of his wings in Psalm 17 and verse 8. And it reads, Keep me as the apple of your eye, hide me under the shadow of your wings. 
And three, merism expresses totality by a pair of contrasting parts, as in Psalm 88 verse 1, I have cried day and night before thee, denotes the crying without ceasing. And four, word plays employ the sound of words to make a pun and highlight a spiritual message. In Psalm 96 verses 4 and 5, the Hebrew words Elohim, gods, and Elilim, idols, create a word play to convey the message that the gods of the nations only appear to be Elohim, gods, but are merely Elilim, idols. Uh, Let's read that in Psalm 96 verses 4 and 5. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Finally, the word selah denotes a brief interlude, either for a call to pause and reflect on the message of a particular section of the psalm, or a change of musical accompaniment, as you read in Psalm 61 verse 4, I will abide in your tabernacle forever, I will trust in the shelter of your wings, Selah. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. And you can listen and watch at the same time on YouTube. Remember, God is always faithful.